Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, pretty excited to be here. So, thank you for coming as well. It feels like a comedy club here. <laughs> <laughs> so, like a stand up comedy with a mic. So, you got a joke? Yeah, so don't bring guns to a drone fight, right? <laughs> well, how about uh, who's heard the, uh, the eight bites walk into a bar? It says bartender, make me a double. Yeah. No? What? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get it? Eight bites walk into a bar. Ah, eight bites, right. Make me a double. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> make it a double, right? It's nice, actually. <laughs> so he got it. So, guys, we have 30 minutes. We're gonna kick this off. My name is Ariel, as Troy said. This is Brian. And uh, we are the next PRISM uh, team. And um, we're gonna guide you through what was PRISM. Anybody here uses it? This is the Oh, the we got someone. <laughs> See, that's how fringe we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so this is the first time you heard about PRISM. All right. Okay, so actually we have the agenda here. We will start by talking about the history of PRISM, how we got to this point, and where we are heading next. And then Brian will show you some of the cool stuff we've been working on. And um, yeah, so let's go on. So PRISM was started back by uh, Microsoft Pattern and Practices when people got to Microsoft and asked, hey, you have Outlook and we want to build stuff that looks like that, but we don't know how. It's very complex and all. So the pattern and practices team went and looked and created this guidance and a framework that helped people create a composite application with modularity inside and all great of features built right into it. Uh, the first version was in 2008. It was based on WPF, which is a very, very important since we will be uh, focusing on this platform and the rest of the XAML platforms as well. Um, after that, there was support for Silverlight and Windows Store, which was uh, a bit flavor, different flavor of Prism. It tackled and challenged different uh, uh, aspects because the platforms are different and have different problems developers are facing. And when uh, it built last year, the universal platform was announced. The guys uh, adapted the framework of uh, Windows Store to support the universal. But not everything is working on as it should, especially around the Windows Phone stuff. But this is something that we are going to be facing. And we are the community now, which will be in the next uh, uh, bullet. So this is now our responsibility. As a team, and as you, you as the community, we are going to push this pre, uh, project forward and enable all the new and great stuff that's coming out for the XAML platforms. Yeah, so just to add to that, uh, to clarify, PRISM was born out of the Microsoft Patterns and Practices team, and actually Glenn Block was part of that team at one point and worked on PRISM. Right. Uh, and now this is one of those frameworks that Microsoft has open sourced and given to a new team to move it forward. And that's where this slide comes in. So I'm part of this team. My name is Brian Lagunas. I work for Infragistics as a product manager. And uh, I've run other open source projects before. And I've, I've been involved with Prism for a very long time. Uh, the other person involved is Brian Noyes. We refer to him as the OG, Yeah. the old guy. His photo is black and white. <laughs> Who does that, really? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, Brian, he's a, a CTO of Salliance. He's a Microsoft Regional Director, Microsoft MVP, and a Pluralsight author. Uh, I'm a Pluralsight author, and... Maybe. One of these days. One of these days. And then, of course, we have Ariel. Yeah. I'm not a Brian, sorry. I had to ruin something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm based in Israel, and I've uh, worked with Prism for, since it was born. And I've been into advisory boards. Uh, ever since, uh, especially around the Windows Store project. And uh, we are the guys that we're going to take this project forward. So, what will be the focus of Prism? And um, we decided not to do any JavaScript stuff. 
right? Yeah, no web. There's enough web frameworks out there. You don't need another one. Yeah, PrismJS sounds nice, but we decided against that. So um, as the platforms around XAML are starting to grow, especially with Xamarin around the corner, uh, with Xamarin Forms uh, supporting even now, um, and we have all the old platforms, WPF, Windows Store, Windows Phone. We have a lot of room to have challenges uh, occurring in that platforms and trying to solve them in a way that uh, everyone in the community can work with and the companies can take and adopt. Yeah. And now, when we have the power of the community behind us, we can really speed things up because uh, the, the way it was done before, Microsoft couldn't take pull requests. The legal system of Microsoft wasn't able to conceive of this option possible. Uh, but now it's a different story. And um, this is a big project with a lot of uh, users using it. So it, it features that you thought about things you could do better are um, we will think about putting them into the framework, right? If that makes sense. Yeah, and previously, just to give some scope around this, is Microsoft would release a new version of Prism every two years. So uh, we have a much faster cadence than that, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> and as Ariel said, we've already had uh, 10 pull requests from the community. So the community is really jumping into it and uh, adding features that they've been wanting for a long time. Right. Uh, one of the great things that patterns and practices did well is the advisory board concept. And we think that this concept should remain. And it's open up for, I think, for people in the community, uh, even you guys, that are willing to participate and think about the way we are going forward. Give us your uh, two pennies and your code even better, I guess. So this is something that we are going to keep and maintain during the next phase of this project. Are you talking about your battery board? Sorry? Yeah, this was the top of it. Okay. OK, so development-wise, because we have also the documentation of Prism, um, which we'll be trying also to keep on track. But we have the WPF stuff coming. And of course, around build, we will know a lot more about what's going on with the Windows 10 stuff because we have the suspicion that the prism for Windows 10 stuff is going to rapidly change and uh, we will need to adapt with that and see what uh, makes sense to do with that new platform. And uh, Zamar Informs, of course, creates a new abstraction for us to work with that, uh, that uses Zamar and have lots of common uh, challenges like with Windows Phone and a bit like in Windows Store. Yeah. We all know what Xamarin Forms is, right? I actually think James from Xamarin's here. Is he in the audience here? No? I don't see him? He's probably up there learning about robots. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's next in line. So he's okay. preparing. Okay, great. So I'm going to hop into a short demo to kind of show you a new preview. Uh, for the Xamarin form support and actually kind of give you a better idea of, like what is Prism because you're sitting there like you're doing all this talking but I still have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, so this is a preview and just, you know we were talking about release cadence. Uh, a week after Microsoft open sourced this to us and we took control, a week later we had a preview for Xamarin form support out there. So that's kind of the pace we're moving around and we're moving really quickly. So right now I uh, have a Xamarin uh, Forms app running. We're just going to worry about Windows Phone now because uh, time constraints. And we have a very simple app. It's uh, two pages. We have a page that's generating some numbers. Uh, you would hit this navigate, and then it would take you to another page, and then that page will take you back. Uh, but we want to do this in an MVVM friendly way, right? We, we want to have those separations. So let's take a look at where Prism kind of comes into this. Because Prism, uh, to explain a little better, Prism is really guidance to help you solve the problems of writing complex apps much easier. It's like a framework. It's a, it's a platform for you to use in your apps. You take pieces and you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel, right? It's just you use the pieces and it just works. You don't have to worry about, uh, we solve all the complex problems and we'll go over those. So 
Who here has actually written or created a new Xamarin Forms application? Okay, cool. So when you create one of these, what happens is you get your three different projects for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. And of course, you have a common PCL that's shared across all those. Now, when this is created, you also get this app.cs in your PCL. This is the shared app file for every project in your solution. And the app has a main page that you normally set similar to this. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our views. We have two views. We have our main page and a detail page. And then we have some view models for these pages. We have the main page view model and the details page view model. So what we're saying here is, hey, when this app starts up, our main page is going to be created an instance of our, our main page XAML, okay? And then that's the page you saw counting down. Now, when you do MVVM in Xamarin Forms, you have a binding context you have to set. This is where all the controls look to get their data when you're data bound. Now, this is how you normally do it. Uh, you would normally set it in code. You create a new instance of it. Maybe you're passing it in through a constructor if you're passing things around. But we, we don't want to do this. Okay, we don't like this. I don't like this. So we're going to delete this. Okay. Now, I just broke that part of the view, but we'll get back to that. What we want to do first is Prism has this concept of what's called a bootstrapper. And all a bootstrapper does is initialize services that you're going to use throughout your app so you don't have to worry about it. It's initialized once, and anytime you want to use those services, you ask for them and you get them. So I went ahead and stubbed out a Prism bootstrapper. Now, Prism relies on an ILC container. Okay, so it's using dependency injection. Uh, we're uh, implementing the uh, inversion of control. And the preview uses Unity. But when we release, you can use anything you want. Okay, it doesn't matter, auto fact, ninject, spring.net, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so we have two abstract methods that we need to worry about. Create main page, which is going to return the page that's going to be basically our root. And this can be anything. It can be a navigation page. You can do any type of setup code, but you just have to wind up returning the page you're going to be uh, used as your root. Then, because we're using a container, our container root is here as well. So this is where you want to start registering your types that you're going to be requesting in your app. Okay, so we'll do that later. So all we have to do to get this to work is we're going to remove this line of code and we're going to create a new instance of our bootstrapper and then call run on it. Okay, that's all we have to do. We, we have a Prism app. All our services that we're going to be using has now been registered and we can start putting things together. So, we're done here. Now, we need to rehook up this view model. Now, is everyone familiar with MVVM? Pretty good? Okay, great. So, there's, as you know, there's lots of ways to achieve the hooking up of a view and a view model. Now, we rely on a view model locator, but this view model locator is a little different than you might be used to, like if you're using MVVM Lite. There's no creating a class and then creating a property for every view model and then having implicit templates. That, that's all gone. Uh, all we do here, we say view model locator dot auto wire. Okay, so I have resharper. So this kind of did it automatically for me. Finally. <laughs> hey, I just installed it. Like, I'm just now using it. Okay, so I'm new to resharper. It's all right. Okay, so basically what we've done is we've added a namespace for prism.vvm and the prism.forms assembly. And this is where our view model locator exists. Now, all I did was set the property. So I'm using that namespace, view model locator dot auto wire view model equals true. That's all I have to do. Okay. And then what happens is if we run this, here's our emulator. Nope. I had a build fail already. What would happen? Where's my error list? This worked right when I was up there. You guys see any errors? I don't see any errors either. It's not even giving me an error list. Have you guys ever seen that before? Visual Studio? Yeah, we don't 
Huh? Yeah, relaunch it. Relaunch it? Yeah. All right, let's relaunch this. The demo gods. <laughs> I didn't do my morning sacrifice. <laughs> okay, so what happens is when we run using the view model locator, it uses our container to resolve our view model using convention, okay? And the convention is uh, view name plus view model. And it automatically finds it and it resolves it using the container, which in this example we're using uh, Unity. So that means that anytime you start asking for dependencies in your view model, you just get them, right? You don't have to do all this crazy stuff to pass things around. Now let's see if, uh, here we go. No, oh, it worked that time. Nice. Okay. Thank you, Visual Studio. Yeah. All right, so this is going to work exactly like you thought it was going to work. All we did was change how the view model was being hooked up. See, there we go. We have every couple seconds we have a new number. Okay, so with Xamarin Forms, though, uh, you got to worry about navigation. Okay, so we have this button. And we're in our view model. Now, one of the biggest problems with Xamarin Forms, in my opinion, is the navigation is really complicated. OK, so we have a navigate command bound to our view. And we're using what's called a delegate command. You guys heard a relay command. Delegate command is Prism's implementation of that. Uh, we're not using parameters in this case, but we support uh, parameters as well. But one of the biggest problems in Xamarin Forms is navigation. It's a pain in the butt. It really is. And that's because. There is no global place you can go for a navigation service. You can't rely on the root page navigation. Each individual view has its own navigation property, which has two different navigation stacks that have to be managed. So in order to reliably navigate in a Xamarin Forms app, you have to have that page instance navigation service that comes with Xamarin. Major pain in the butt, especially when you don't want any view responsibilities inside of your view model. You can't have it. So with Prism, what we do is in order to get navigation, you simply have to implement an interface called I Navigation Service Aware. OK. And we're going to implement these missing members. And all it is is a single property called Navigation Service. OK. So now that I have this Navigation Service, in this Navigate, I can just simply say Navigation Service navigate. And then I could pass it a parameter. Uh, the first one is, where do I want to na navigate to? This is my key. Uh, what did I, I'm going to just call it detail page. Okay. Now let's say I want to pass parameters to this page. How do I get information or state from this view model to where up to the next view model where I'm going? Well, we just create uh, a navigation parameter to pass. So we'll come here. I'll say var. Uh, Parameters equals new navigation parameters. Now you can uh, you can do an HTTP type uh, URL uh, for your parameters. You know, like the question mark ID equals. So you can generate a string based parameter, or you can actually pass par uh, objects themselves. So add. Uh, we'll give it a name, value, and then we'll go. Uh, We'll pass in the value of the view model, the current value, right? And in order to pass that around, where did I go? Can you guys see this code OK? Yeah. Because it might be too big. And then I just pass in these parameters here. OK, so now what I've done is I've created some parameters and I'm passing them along. It'd be any object. But you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Brian. You typed in this, this string right here, this magic word, detail page. Uh, how does it know that when I say navigate to this string, go do that? Go navigate to whatever this is called. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, go to it. Well, that's why we've got to go back to our bootstrapper. And we've got to basically create a mapping with our container, which is a property on our bootstrapper. And then we're going to register type for navigation. And this is uh, 
convention based, and we're going to say detail page. The convention is the name of the, the object. In this case, it's called detail page. But if you wanted to change it, you could just pass in your override. And I want to name it, you know, Z. Whatever you want to call it, you can give it your own key. In our case, we're just going to keep it like it is. So before we hit that button, here is our detail page view model. Now I want to show something cool. So something else that's really useful is now we have this, this navigation event occurring and we have parameters being passed, but we need access to those parameters. How do we know? How, do, how can we participate in that process? Well, your view model just has to implement iNavigationAware, and then you get two methods, navigated from and onNavigated to. So this view model will know when it's navigated to, and then when you leave it, it knows when you're being navigated away from. And besides that, we also have iConfirm navigation, which basically has a Boolean that says, can I even navigate away from this place? Am I in a state to where maybe I'm dirty and I need to be saved first? So you can't navigate away, right? You can do that. So as you can see, we're navigating to, we're grabbing the parameters. We're checking the value. Here's the key. I know it's a double and I'm setting the value property on this view model, which is a double to be displayed in the UI. So let's go ahead and run the app. So I'm gonna wait for a number. I'll go ahead and pass it. There we go. I went ahead, I took that, that value, passed it as a parameter, navigated, we received those, and now I can display that to, uh, on this page. And then I have a go back button, which I press and I go back to the main page, which I'm just using the navigation service and calling go back. Okay, really slick. So how are we doing on time? So b besides, uh, the navigation, we also have the event aggregator. So event aggregation, it's a pub sub type thing, uh, eventing system. So Xamarin Forms has a messaging center, but I can't stand it. For one, it's static. Everything they do is a static class, and that makes your, class, your, your view models nearly impossible to test. I hate testing static classes in my view models. So we have our own event aggregation, uh, which has been used in WPF for a long time now. Uh, it's very mature. And if you want to use it, you just simply ask for it in your constructor. So you can mock it. You say, hey, I have an aggregator. I need one of you, right? And then our, the Prism library is just going to give it to you. It's already been registered in that bootstrapper. It's a singleton. You get the same instance no matter where you ask for it. And then you say, hey, I have this event called the go back event. I'm going to publish this event. And I'm going to pass some payload with it. Right? This, this object I'm going to pass because I need to send this message. It's, it's fire and forget. Okay? And then you just need a subscriber to that. And I think I have time to show you the sub subscriber. So if I wanted this main view model here to listen for that event, uh, the first thing I would need to do is ask for the I event aggregator. Just like that. Except I would lowercase it. And once you have it, uh, we just need to subscribe. Okay, so I can say, hey, uh, event aggregator, uh, get the event that I want to listen to, which in this case was, uh, I think, the go back event. That's what I call it, yep. And once you get that, go ahead and subscribe. And went back. All right, so there we go. Now, does ReSharper add that? Ah, it's not perfect. See, you should have automatically completed that for me. Okay, so now what's going to happen is I'm just going to hit a break point here uh, because I know that when we navigate back, I'm publishing that event. And anything that can listen for it, you can have multiple publishers and multiple subscribers. You're not limited. Anything to listen for that uh, will get it. So I'm going to hit a break point. I'm going to rerun this. And the expectation is, is when we go back, uh, that event's going to execute, and we'll, we'll listen to it, we'll capture it, and then uh, let's navigate, go back. Uh, so we hit the breakpoint, and there's the payload that went with the event, right? So this helps keep all your view models testable. It completely decouples all the concerns of navigation away from the UI completely, 
and all you have to worry about is navigating like keys or whatever. Uh, we have a ton of other services in here uh, that we just don't have time to cover, but this is kind of the direction of where Prism is going now. So uh, that's kind of my time. So I'm just going to stop it there. And then, there you go. Okay. So to summarize what we have seen, um, the message that I want you to leave this session with is that uh, PRISM is now in our hands. This is kind of a call for action for any of you who want to participate and contribute to this uh, once a very um, popular uh, uh, Microsoft project sh that it's now in our hands. Um, so, anything else we want to add? Yeah, I just want to make, you know, let you guys know that we really want the community's input on this. Uh, you know, we got a lot of code churn on the Xamarin Forms stuff, especially if you're a Xamarin Forms person, come talk to me because I, I want to run some things by you. We're doing some things that I'm not satisfied with, and uh, I wanted to run some other ideas by some people who actually are, are heavy into Xamarin Forms. Uh, go to our GitHub, it's github.com slash prism library. Uh, so if you want to contribute or just mark or check things out, see how we're doing things, uh, you know, please get involved. And uh, yeah, that's our time. Thank you very much.